Hey guys, it's me, the Don Fanatic, and welcome to week 7 of the Pokemon Premier League. Two weeks in a row where I'm bringing you games on upload day. It's pretty fascinating. Anyway, we are here for week 7 and we are against uh, Stella. You might be asking who Stella is. It is in fact Shardy, um, our German opposition. Gotta do the Brits proud, obviously. Nope, we're not going to get into any sort of racist or historical territory here. We're going to focus on the Pokemon battle. Um... You can see the teams on the screen. Uh, I'll give you a quick rundown of what I've got. I've got a specially offensive, obviously. Uh, modest, choice scarf, Helios, quite bulky as well, because I don't need full speed investment. Uh, I've got physically defensive Skarmory. I have got offensive Mega Gallade. To be honest, I didn't really do much this game. I should have probably bought Crawdon for it, uh, over it instead. I uh, decided not to in the end. Specially defensive uh, Aromatis. Physically offensive with Toxic and Morning Sun Arcanine and the Assault Vest Metagross. Metagross and Arcanine definitely my win conditions this game, along with Heliolisk. They are the ones that are going to be doing the work for me uh, if I can do anything at all, because if you look at Shardy's team, his team is really, really, really spooky, literally, because first thing he has is a Gore Geist. That's super spook. Um, to be honest, I wasn't too fussed by it, because obviously I have Arcanine. I have got Shadow Ball on my Metagross. Um, Heliolisk will be able to hit it well with Dark Pulse and Thunderbolt. Um, otherwise, you know, I can do decent damage to it. Uh, I was surprised to see Nidoqueen, surprised in the fact that I had a lot of things that can take it on offensively, not so much defensively. Clefable, I uh, wasn't too bothered about, I have Whirlwind if it wants to set up, I have Metagross to take it on, I have, uh, well, well, Arcanine can take it on relatively well, depending on its set. Uh, Lucario, which, you know, you, you literally cannot prep for, because it could be any set, and, you know, even if it is the set you prep for, you just, you, you can't beat it, so... That thing was super scary. Mega Pidgeot I knew was amazingly good for, against my uh, defensive core as well. Just completely destroys it. So uh, the, I wasn't really looking forward to facing that. That's why I had to bring Heliolisk. It was risky that I didn't bring Noivern because Noivern does outspeed it naturally. So um, it was a risk I took. But I do have a extreme speed and bullet punch on this team. So I didn't think I'd need it. And then he's got Rotom Wash which again destroys my defensive core. So had to play careful around that thing, I expected it to be defensive though, but anyway, as you can see, we are now facing Shardy, um, apparently transform transformed into a woman uh, overnight, but anyway, we're going to leave with Heliolisk because it does outspeed his whole team, he does have the Needle Queen, if he doesn't leave it, I'm not expecting him to switch it in straight away, because obviously Heliolisk's um, Hyper Voice or Surf will do a lot of damage, I'm just going to look at Vol Switch, I don't mind if he brings in Needle Queen turn 1, because it will involve some mind games. Um, in comes Arcanine, I'm really not expecting him to click Hydro Pump, I'm expecting him to click uh, either Will-O-Wisp or Volt Switch, and he does click Volt Switch, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, I'm going to reveal that I'm an offensive Arcanine, bear that in mind for later on, because uh, that Volt Switch does quite a lot of damage, um, but you know Arcanine is naturally defensively a god. So in comes Nidoqueen, I ummed an Ard and I thought I need Arcanine this game, but I really haven't got that great a switch in. So I'm going to stay in Flare Blitz, because one, we can scout what kind of set he is. Uh, I was really fearing the Scar. Um, but as you can see, Flare Blitz does over half, so I'm like, sweet. I really thought he was going to get up Stealth Rocks, and he does. Uh, it was early in the game. Stealth Rocks do well against my team, including this Arcanine, which is at half health already. And it does well against everything else apart from Metagross. I think it's neutral to everything else. Oh, no, I make a Gallade, but Stealth Rocks will help in the long run, uh, especially with uh, Lucario running around. So he obviously can't stay in. Um, he has a very safe switch into Rotom Wash. So for I'm going to click Toxic. And that Rotom is now uh, badly poisoned, which is great because along with that and Heliolisk, we can wear this thing down super, you know, well, I say super quickly, super slowly. Um, because this Rotom Wash is going to be a bit of a pain for me because, uh, well, we all know what Rotom Wash does. It, it's fat, kind of, and it just falls switch and Hydro Pumps a lot. And the occasional will o -Wisp. Uh, I'm going to go into Vimto one because, you know, I was expecting the Hydro Pump. I'm also expecting maybe a Hidden Power Ground because obviously we're both weak to it. It's a safe play. Um, but I am quite heavily HP invested into Heliolisk this week uh, because I, did, I really didn't need the speed. Because um, if he bought Scarf Light, he has to outspeed me no matter what it was. Everything else I can outspeed. His speed tiers are quite funky. Um, so I go into uh, Kaiba now because I'm thinking, right, this thing's especially bulky ish. Uh, we can take some uh, some hits here. Now, Shardy decides to stay in and go for the Volt Switch. I was, I didn't think he'd want to stay in this time because he saw how much the Volt Switch done to him. Uh, I, I figured he'd probably want to keep this thing around, but every time Gallade comes in, it's a free switch into his Mega Pidgeot, and I was very aware of this when team building, and uh, it's one reason why, you know, I thought I need Mega Gallade because it can still do a lot of damage to Shardy's team, 
um, just dents some holes in, you know, just for Heliolus to clean up late game or Arcanine. So uh, that was why I bought it, but I knew that I had to basically sack something off at this point. Didn't want it to be a Romantis because I've got the Babiri Berry on there in case, uh, obviously, the Lucario starts running around a bit. Um, so I can at least get some damage off so I can start to clean up extreme speed and bullet punch and whatnot. He goes to the safe Hurricane, he gets the confusion, which really doesn't matter because I know he's going to click Heat Wave next turn, but I can't switch into Arcanine because Stealth Rocks. And then he can obviously Hurricane and that's going to be me next turn. Um, so I have to let Skarma go down. I don't know if there was any sort of way I could live because I wasn't specially defensive. I let Skarma go down. Didn't have Defog, so I don't really mind too much. Obviously, it just meant I couldn't have Stealth Fox up. Stealth Fox would make this game a lot easier for me, uh, as you'll see. But in comes Vimto. Now, I know he is, you know, probably going to go into Nido Queen. I'm expecting him to go into Nido Queen. So I'm pretty sure I click the Hyper Voice here. Now, I am modest. And uh, as you can see by the damage, uh, I, I get a crit on uh, Moonshine. Now, I'm pr I, well. I'm gonna stay in here because it forces in his Gorgeist, or I kill this thing. Um, and he can't really safely switch in uh, the Needle Queen, so we can't safely switch in his Lucario because Lucario still takes about 50%. Um, he brings in the Gorgeist, finds out I'm Scarfed. Obviously, the way I bought it in against Pidgeot pretty much reveals I am Scarfed, but I have to keep this thing around. It doesn't matter that it's so low on health. I need to keep it around. Uh, in comes Buster, the uh, Arcanine. Now, and I'm pretty confident whatever he goes for, if it's Shadow Sneak or Sea Bomb, it won't kill me, especially as I have Intimidate. And I will be able to click the Morning Sun next turn. However, he does pull the very smart double and goes into Overwash, which is a fantastic name, by the way, for this Rotom Wash. And um, thanks to Leftovers, uh, I'm actually able to live another sort of Stealth Rock switch in. Not just Leftovers this turn, from the previous turn as well. I'm able to live another Stealth Rock switch in, which is great because I can come in on Gorgeist and I can basically Morning Sun on its face, unless it has got, of course, the Shadow Sneak. I'm going to go into Mega Gallade, because at this point it's looking less and less important. Um, he does click Thunderbolt, which I will live, and it does basically mean I can just click Mega Revolt and click Close Combat. To be honest, the smart play here was probably to click Sword Stance, um, or Ice Punch at least, because Ice Punch hits uh, Neo Queen, it hits Gorgeist, it hits Pidgeot. Um, Clef probably can't take, well it can't take two because I have Poison Jab as well. Um, I did consider this thing having uh, Shadow Sneak, but I clicked Close Combat here rather stupidly because, you know, I should have seen this thing coming in. I figured that, you know what, I'll just click Ice Punch in case, you know, he does predict the Shadow Sneak or, you know, if he predicts a, a switch of sorts on my side. Um, but as you can see, that's why uh, Sword Stance would have been nice, because Ice Punch would have done about 80% of this thing, and that would have made it really a lot easier to deal with. That's not very good English, but you know. But this is the chance for me to bring in Buster, um, just for me to basically click Morning Sun. I haven't revealed it to him yet. He knows I have Toxic, he knows I have uh, Flare Blitz, that's all I've revealed. I am going to click uh, Morning Sun, because he does switch out. I will be able to take on any hit he wants to do pretty comfortably. Uh, but in comes the Rotom Wash. Now, at this point, I don't really know what Rotom Wash is going to want to do to me. Um, I'm pretty happy that I don't think Hydro Pump will take me out. If it does, it'll be very, very close. Um, but I'm also very confident that if I, you know, Morning Sun again, and uh, he stays in, once Toxic's happened, I might be able to clean with Flare Blitz. Potentially. It's a roll. Because uh, Life Orb would have killed it for definite after Toxic. Um, but after, you know, just normal, it doesn't. However, uh, I was also pretty confident he wasn't going to click Hydro Pump uh, in the first place because I do have Heliolisk around, and he doesn't want that thing being healed up. So I stay in, and I'm at a good amount of health, which is fantastic. Now, in comes the Lucario. Now, this is where it's getting quite important. You know, um, or, well, you know, because I've told you, this is an offensive Arcanine. Shardy thought I was bulky. Uh, bulky offensive, not speedy offensive. And I knew I had to bring speedy offensive, to be able to bring it in against this thing to stop it from sweeping me, basically. Um, he was at neutral attack, uh, because obviously I didn't intimidate him. I had to click Flare Blitz and I killed him. I was so, so happy when I saw he didn't have Focus Sash or nothing. Even then, if he clicked Swords Dance, uh, for some reason, I think he would have probably just killed me outright, because, you know, it's, he could because he's a Lucario. Um, I would outspeed him extreme speed next turn, because I am fastest in my priority out priorities. His priority, that's a lot of priority. In comes the Mega Pidgeot, um, well, the only thing I have left that can even remotely switch into this thing uh, is my Special Defensive Aromatis, which, you know, Hurricane does less than half, but yeah, less than half. So obviously he hits because he's Mega Pidgeot, 
Um, I do take another one on turn health and I get confused. Don't think it mattered too much really because I clicked Wish here. To be honest, I should have clicked Moonblast because, you know, weakening this thing would have been amazing. Um, I'm pretty sure he had Roost as his move uh, after the game. I found out he was Work Up, Heat Wave, Hurricane, Roost. I was really, really scared of Quick Attack at this point because if he had Quick Attack, he might have just won. Uh, I go into Heliolisk. I'm going to click Dark Pulse. He's not going to stay in. Uh, I can click Dark Pulse, click it twice, uh, and it'll kill something uh, apart from the Clefable. Uh, he does bring in the Needle Queen. It just about lives. Now, I was pretty confident he was going to bring in the Clefable, but I wanted Clefable to come in because it gives me a chance to go into Metagross. Metagross is so good matchup wise against Shardy's team. Um, I knew it was key, and. I knew this thing would have Flamethrower or Fire Blast because it needed it, otherwise it cannot touch Metagross and Metagross can set up on this thing's face all day every day. Um, so I'm going to go into it. I'm Assault Vest. I am Naive Nature, so I am minor Special Defense. There was a reason why I wanted to keep my defense as high as possible. It was probably Lucario, to be honest. Um, but as you can see, after Stealth Rocks, Fire Blast doesn't do over half, which is fantastic. So I can take another one if I miss this Flare Blitz. Uh, not Flare Blitz, sorry, this Meteor Mash. Uh, I really wish that Metagross could learn Flare Blitz, that would be quite handy. I do hit the Meteor Mash, which is fantastic. I clicked it because I didn't know if he was going to switch. Uh, I could have probably clicked Bullet Punch and killed it. Didn't fancy my chances, though. Um, but I do get the kill, which is great. In comes the Gorgeous, which Shardy thinks uh, can take on my Metagross, but no, I actually prepped for this thing. I'm naive for a reason, it's because I am carrying the Shadow Ball. One, it hits this thing. Two, it hits... Um, the Latias, kind of, and that does about 45%. He goes to the Willow, which isn't going to save him at this point. Um, I do get a bit lucky on this next one. Obviously, the burn is going to hinder me from bullet punching things, but the main thing that I would have wanted to bullet punch is dead. Um, I give the Zen Headbox. I expect him to switch into Pidgeot because of Shadow Ball. I get the flinch, which is fantastic because Gorgeist um, would have Synthesis, he told me he clicked Synthesis then. So I do click the Shadow Ball here because I'm thinking, right, it's the safest play I have. He can't switch in guys to me anymore, um, so I'm just going to kill him. He didn't switch into the Pidgeot for the offensive momentum. Uh, could have also sort of kept differentials. So um, in comes the Pidge. I am just going to Bullet Punch. There is no reason for me to switch because I can't switch into anything. He makes the safe play and goes to the Hurricane, which is fair enough. And uh, Metagross goes down, so it's taken down. Uh, the Clefable and Gorgeist, pretty much Shardy's bulkiest mons, which means uh, I'm now free to click Hyper Voice because one, it does about 74 to 86 percent if he isn't bulky at all in this thing, um, but it also kills off his Rotom Wash with the Toxic. I mean, I'd be able to outspeed it even if it didn't kill this turn. It's definitely a two hit KO from that turn. No, not even if it's specially defensive. Um, but that Toxic is another kill for Arcanine, so I think Arcanine's got two kills so far. Um, he obviously also can't switch into Nidoqueen at this point because he will again get outsped and die to Hyper Voice. So in comes the Pidge. All I have to do is stay in and click Hyper Voice. That pretty much seals the deal for me. He hasn't cl clicked Quick Attack, which means he probably doesn't have it. Because he would have clicked Quick Attack there and he would have killed me because I was at 7 health. So he clicks the Hurricane. Pidgeot gets another kill. I think he gets, I think that's 4. Um, at this point, all I have left is Arcanine. Now, after Stealth Rocks, I am obviously going to live. I am Leftovers. I'm so glad I didn't bring Life Orb on this thing, because I would have probably been dead by now. I'm going to click Intimidate. I'm going to click Intimidate. I Intimidate this thing. I go for Extreme Speed, and I get a crit. Now, the crit mattered in the sense that we'll never know if Extreme Speed would have killed otherwise, because it was a roll of Shardy's investment. I think it was about 62.5% in favour to Shardy, sort of 60 60-70% in Shardy's favour, so the crit just helped swing it in my favour. And obviously this thing is so weak, it just dies to extreme speed anyway. I outspeed it, so you know, uh, I can just go to extreme speed and kill the Needle Queen and come away with the extremely close 1-0 win against Shardy. Now I know Shardy was really not happy with uh, how he played the late game in that because as soon as he lost Lucario, I felt like I was in control of the game again because Lucario literally runs through my team. As does Rotom, well, yeah, it runs through my team. Rotom Wash destroys my core, other than Aromatisse. Um, Mega Pidgeot destroys my core, including Aromatisse. Um, Lucario just destroys my whole core. Clefable doesn't, but that was always going to be there to just be a nuisance, I think. 
Nita Queen again can run through my core. I wasn't expecting it too much because I have got offensive things to take it on quite easily. He was Pasho Berry in case of the Cordon. I didn't bring it. I probably should have bought it because uh, it would have made sense. Um, and then Gorgeist. Well, Gorgeist is just, you know, flat. But we come away with the 1-0. Thank God. I really wasn't expecting to win that game. But, you know, we played really well. We took our opportunity while we could. And we got the win. So, uh, thanks for the game, Shardy. Obviously, check out the links to his channel and his side of the battle if I remember to do it below. I mean, all the coaches are there anyway. Uh, he's got the team analysis and the his side of the battle on, or he will have it on there at least at some point. Um, otherwise, guys, uh, thank you for coming to watch this uh, battle. There is a one-week break because a lot of us are off to EGX this week. Uh, plus, you know, some managers need to catch up on some real-life things. So, uh... We'll be back in uh, two weeks. Now, I don't know what will happen because I'm moving house. Uh, depending if I have Wi-Fi or not, I, I am going to be... I'm due to play Sam. So, uh, we'll see if I have Wi-Fi. I should have Wi-Fi when I get back from EGX for a week. So, I might have to play Sam and try and play my week nine opponent. In, which I think is poorly. Um, in one week. Um, otherwise, guys, I've rambled a bit. So, I will see you next week. Bye.